In this section, we're going to be looking at a platform called WordPress. WordPress is what's known as a content management system or CMS. And it's essentially a way of managing your site, which in theory avoids the need for code entirely. It was originally developed for blogging and allowed people very easily to add new blog posts, change the style of their blog without any knowledge of HTML or CSS at all. It's developed since then though into a whole website management tool and now powers an astonishing 25% of all websites. I'm going to recommend that you get to grips with it because it's free, it's easy to use, there's a huge amount of support online and you can make great looking sites that your clients will be able to update and manage themselves. Excited? I hope so. Let's get cracking. To use WordPress, you need a web server. And of course, you're very lucky that with the Complete Web Developer course, you get a year's web hosting for free. So if you haven't set up your first hosting package yet, then go to the hosting section of this course and follow the instructions there. If you've done that, go to ecowebhosting.co.uk slash cp slash manage hosting. And that should list the domain names that you've set up the one that I'm going to be working with today is one called a WordPress test domain.com. And if I click on that, it'll open up the control panel for this test domain, and I'll be able to install WordPress directly from there. Most web hosts do have this functionality, so if you're already set up with a different web host, I'm sure you'll be able to do the same thing with them. With Eco Web Hosting, though, scroll down we'll be installing the full version of WordPress, which we can use for blogs or any other website. So the only option we need to put in is where we want to install WordPress. So you may have already uploaded some files to your hosting package. So if you have, I'd recommend installing WordPress in a subdomain. So that can be anything you like. It could be blog or website or whatever, but I'm gonna call it WordPress. So just put WordPress in there. The slash at the end is optional but then click install now. And what that actually does is creates a database and some PHP scripts, which we'll be looking at in the next section to allow WordPress to run on your site so that you can complete the install process. Now the first link will only work if you've purchased the domain name. If you haven't purchased the domain name, you'll need to use the temporary URL, that is the second link. and that will work regardless of whether or not you've purchased the domain name. All right, so if everything's gone well, you should see this WordPress installation page. It's all fairly straightforward. You just put your site title. So I'm gonna put example WordPress site, but you could put whatever you like there. Your username, I'll go for Rob Percival, but again, you can put whatever you like. And then password, so I've got one automatically generated for me here. I'll leave that as it is. And then your email address, I'll put rob at robpercival.co.uk. If for some reason you want to switch off search engines, then you can do that, but probably you're going to want people to find your site, so I would leave that unticked. And then you just press install WordPress. If you've got LastPass going, it might remember your password. So I will just do that. And then you log in. Hopefully you've remembered the password. I've got LastPass here, so I'm going to pop that in. Ah, it's got the username wrong. Oh, well. So just put the username and password that you entered. Remember me if you want to be remembered on this machine. And then log in. And this will take you to the WordPress dashboard. And this is where we're going to start looking through the functionality of WordPress in the next video. See you there.